City Boy issue two. Greg mm-hmm. Pak writing with Minkayu Zhang on the art. Uh, so yeah, this was a super quick read. I thought uh, I got through this in no time at all. Uh, so the City Boy, uh, we get a little bit more some flashbacks to him as a kid and some other kids picking on him. Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of this is. We ended last issue, because there's multiple like, timelines going on, but uh, we know he's been taken by Intergang, and last mm-hmm. issue was kind of like him sort of like reacting to his friend, the, the homeless guy being uh, hurt, and we yeah. kind of pick up from, from when that leaves off, and this this uh, gangster dude's kind of um, you know, yelling at him, uh, wants him to, you know, he's calling him a monster, things like that, yeah. and then eventually the guy from Intergang walks in and is like, no, nah, we're taking him. Yeah. Um, but we get this glimpse that City Boy can see all these previous fights, all, all the fights that have ever happened mm-hmm. in this location. So yep. we're, you know, we see like gangsters fighting each other from like the 40s in one corner. Uh, we see other fights in the other corner. Um, but yeah, it's uh, basically, it's, it's like his powers unleashing and stuff. And I, I have yeah. to say, I love how uh, uh, Mannheim looks in this, the guy from Intergang. I, uh-huh. love, I love the very square face, the the very this kind is, of spiky hair and the mustache. It's very 90s villain to me. This, this what's look. that? And it, it's, it's very Kirby. Oh, yeah, like, I can see that. This, yeah. You know, the art style, it's very, he's, he's very bulky and square. Uh, and it just kind of it reminded me of, you know, the almost like, like when you see Ben Grimm before he turned into the thing, it's it's very similar. Yeah. Um, it, so. Yeah, the, the first like half or so of the issue, which is basically like showing you the flashbacks as a kid is of him getting beat up mm-hmm. and like him getting angry and it's like the first time he ever fought back properly in, ma- yeah. in whatever uh to him like unleashing more of his power in present day as he's becoming more desperate he's like no i'm not letting these guys win so yeah, it's tying into kind of his motivations going back to his past and um that he's got a history of being the underdog and stuff like that uh but you know the, the final chunk though is maybe the more interesting part where the scientist from Intergang is like, hey, you snuck into my lab, you know, five years ago or whatever, and got, like, connected with the essence of the city, and you've done nothing with it. All you do is go looking for, like, you know, trinkets, trinkets and, yeah. you know, stuff you can sell for money. Um, so we're not having that. And we get this insane tease of, like, what the scientist and Intergang are actually doing and what they're working for. Like, so he turns on a switch, and City Boy, like, feels that he's on top of the city, and then he sees it burning, he sees Metropolis burning, and then he sees Darkseid standing there, and the implication I was getting from this is that they're doing something to help Darkseid like, invade or destroy Earth or something. Was that... Was, was that yeah, so what, what I'm getting is, right, so Intergang usually has a tie to Darkseid, right? They, they, they use Apocalyptin, or I guess that's how you say it, uh, tech to, you know, to make uh, life hell for Superman. Apocalyptin. I don't know what you're uh, Apocalyptian, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, tech, right? And so what it seems like is that they were doing is they were trying to... Whatever technology this is from, from the fourth world, um, it's almost like, you know how there's the big pits in Apocalypse? It almost is like that they're trying to turn all the major cities into those. And then through that, you know, they would have this one person that... It will be able to facilitate that. That's how I took it, is that that was originally what this tech was for, and it just took to him. So, um, yeah, that dark side tease, though, when when he shows up and it's just the boom, I was like, oh, man, this is this is getting there. This took an interesting turn. Yeah. Um, I, I think that sort of opened up the scope of what it was, because we, we were all kind of like, oh, shit, Inter Gang's involved? That came out of nowhere yeah. in the last issue. Uh, mm-hmm. And then this issue, it's like, oh shit! Now we have this like apocalyptic vision of the future. No pun intended. Yeah. Uh, they they want to use him for, and they're like literally torturing his friend as well, who's also strapped to a chair mm-hmm. uh, and being electrocuted. Uh, so again, it's like they're kind of almost goading him to like unleash his power. Yeah. And sure enough, what does he do? He ends up like forming a like a a dragon made of concrete out of the city. Yep. It's like a steel stone dragon. It's just, yeah. It's the spirit of Metropolis is what I'm going to say. Uh, so, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, which obviously starts wrecking stuff, um, causes a big ruckus. And they're in Metropolis, so I was thinking, surely Superman's going to notice this at some point. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, the end of the issue is 
you know, he's like fighting back against the intergang soldiers. He's going all wrath on them. And he says, this is my city now. And then the red streak comes in and crushes the head of the dragon. And the final page is Superman saying, I think this is our city. Or I like to think this is our city. So I presume City Boy is going to get some Superman lessons next issue Mm -hmm. about... uh, well, being good hey, and empathy and stuff. Yeah. Let's not <laughs> fold all the glass and steel into a dragon, all right? Like, you got to be a bit more responsible. Well, I think it's interesting because that City Boy clearly is this character who has been hard done mm-hmm. by and has been yeah. living rough his entire life. He's had a lot of unfortunate circumstances. I think mm-hmm. having Clark sympathize with him and try and sort of lead him on a good path uh, yeah. may make for good stuff. And I do wonder if this is something that he actually like takes in at first or is he going to try and resist and rebel against superman's teachings at first and then mm-hmm. you know down the line you know because hero's yeah. journey and all that like he has to resist the call first before you right. effect you know before, eventually before he it. listens to the mentor character so you know, you know pot- potential uh there yeah. uh, and and we're getting great pack writing superman for even if it's just a little bit which that's nice i'm yeah. always a fan of so yeah when he was in metropolis i was wondering if they were going to try to keep it separate or if Superman would make an appearance. So when I saw that red streak, I got a big stupid smile. And yeah. I was like, all right. Also, the reference that Gotham and Metropolis were just over the river from each other, which... I never liked that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, especially now, because it just makes me think of Batman v Superman, Donna Justice. Yeah. <laughs> and the less we think about that, the better. Especially since, like, if they're right next to each other, like, Superman should be swooping into Gotham all the time. Like, like anything mm-hmm. happening, like, is so close, he should yeah. be just, like, diving in anyway, because well, he's right so there. Then- so then you're telling me that the Metropolis is on the other side of the Bay of Gotham, and then on the other side of Gotham is Bloodhaven. So you have three of the major cities in in the DC universe are all within <coughs> that close of each other. I mean, that's yeah, that that's well, basically Marvel's uh, New York, you know. Well, I've always thought of Bloodhaven as New Jersey to Gotham's New uh-huh. York. That's how I've always right. seen them. Right, and then you know. Uh, and then you have Metropolis as some unnamed, you know, because as, as it was originally written, it was almost like Metropolis was New York during the day and Gotham was New York at night. Yeah. I think, and that's how they played it. So Yeah, I think in my head, I've, I've always thought of what uh, Metropolis is more Washington, D.C., I guess, just because yeah, it made more sense. sense in my head to me that it was more a stand-in for that, yeah. even though they used New York in the movies to stand-in right. for it, because, you know. Right. Well, and I think traditionally Gotham is in New Jersey, so... Yeah, like I've I've seen things throughout the years, you know. Um, maybe okay. it's just movies, or it looks like they have New Jersey style license plates, and that's just a. But, I mean, who knows? Yeah, I don't like when they're across the like they can be. I feel close to each other in the way like Boston and New York are, right? To where they're they in the de- same region. They, sh- they should definitely or, be in different states. Like I'll I'll yeah, just I'll say that much. For sure, not not across the bay, you know. That I never like that, but yeah, yeah. but no, and and. Jung's art looks great. Is that how you say it? Is it Young or Jung? I actually don't know. I'm not not creative. Yeah, I'm not I think I said Jung earlier, which is probably Jung? not even okay. right either. That's pro- I, I, I went a third option, then it's probably wrong. Yeah, but um, looks great. I mean, again, it's very Kirby esque in the best ways. I don't feel like it's trying to copy Kirby, just using it as a, you know, almost as an homage. Especially with inner gang and dark side and Superman and all this other stuff, so it definitely uh, doesn't it feel house style, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have that prestige quality to it that some of the other like black label books and stuff have. True. But it doesn't look like it's just doing house style. It does feel like it's its own identity, its own yeah, you know, uh, feel and something like the more square heads and some of the villains to make yeah. them more menacing is exactly what I'm talking about there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, that's that's good. I uh, I'm enjoying it. It's definitely. You know, it's not the vigil, right? The vigil's my winner yeah. standout of of this Still. line for sure. But mm-hmm. but City Boy is is a solid read, and I'm enjoying uh, seeing where it's going. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely a quick read, though. Uh, maybe, maybe that's just because yeah. the first half or so of this issue was mostly that that fight scene mm-hmm. with the the small flashbacks to him fighting as a kid. Yeah. So, uh, what are you giving City Boy issue two? I'm gonna give this a solid eight. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I'll go a smidge lower at 7.5, but uh, certainly not by much.